Father, thank you. Father, that you've captivated our attention. Lord, you've caught us. You've caught, you've caught our attention, Father. And just like blind Bartimaeus, Lord, we don't want to let you pass by, Lord, without us taking hold of our inheritance, taking hold of the very reason you've come. Lord, and just saying, Lord, if you are willing, make me clean. And you just reached out and you said, I am willing. You, Lord, and he shouted louder. He shouted louder and louder and louder, even though people were saying to keep quiet. He was desperate for you. And, you, and he got your attention. Lord, I want to thank you for the hearts of people in this place. Lord, that are hungry for you. And you say you satisfy the hungry. Lord, this is an amazing season that we are in. It is, Lord, aligning us for the miraculous. Lord, when nothing else, ma nothing else helps, that it's all about you. And we want to thank you that you are showing us your goodness. Lord, as we look at, just we go through your word and see what you're saying to us today. Father, I want to thank you for life that you impart life yet today. Lord, you stir up the kingdom of heaven in us. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I'm, I've just got a really, really short word this morning because, as I said, we went away, and I just want to really just share just the crux of what I feel that the Lord is just saying at the moment for us um, as a church. And we went away, and... Um, as, as leaders just over this weekend, just to go and dream, just to go and we, call, we called it just a dream team, a dream time, and just to hear what the Holy Spirit is saying to us at this season um, as a church, because the Lord's been de uh, releasing His Word and so on. But you know what's dawned on me is that in the last seven years, God has, has created a family in this place. And um, I think about the last seven years, and I think what's happened here is that we have built relationship, we have built friendship, but it's more than that. When I come into church, I feel like I've come to be with family. I, I don't come into church, and I don't feel nervous, I don't feel spare, I don't feel like I don't belong in this place, or I feel like um, I, I'm amongst people that just want to bite me. Um, I come into church and, and, and it's a place where I feel safe. It's a place where I feel that I can um, trust people and, and I'm trusted. And so the, the Lord's been doing that over the last seven years and I just praise God for it. And um, I'm sure some of you can witness to that. Georgia. Uh, <laughs> um, so, yeah, we, it's, you know, God's created a family in the last seven years in this place and and I think on that foundation, the Lord is saying, it is now time to build. It is now time to train and equip. It's now time to get ready with the work of God um, more than ever before. You see, the thing is, if we, if we, if we just go and we, tr and, we, and we lay a foundation on works, what's going to happen is all kinds of things are going to stir up amongst us, that orphan spirit within us where we sort of like, I'm looking for my position. I'm looking for, uh, for what? You know, uh, I'm ambitious, I'm, I'm, I'm protecting my position, I'm protecting my call, or whatever. And you don't see family. You don't see that this is a trusting environment. And that's why I believe God wanted to establish that amongst us first before He calls us into, um, um, into that destiny that He has for us. So that we're not threatened by one another. We, we know that this is home. We know that this is our house. We take ownership of our house. Um, and, and you know and you are safe in the position that you are in here as sons and daughters. So I just want to praise God for that, first of all, of what He's doing and the way He's established us here in this place. And, and the exciting thing is he's saying now's the time for training, equipping. Now's the time for releasing. Now's the time to start building. Now's the time that we need to be stirred up more and more for the, th for the things of the kingdom of God to start to build the house of God. And, um, and so one of the things I feel like the Lord is really saying to us is that it is time to make ready for the word of God. Um, and I just wanted to share, Angela is sort of, uh, when, we, when we went over to the north, Angela was with us. Um, we were a group of 20, including the children. And, um, and so while we were going over, two years ago, what happened was when, when Eric and them were coming over uh, back from the north, they came through another gate, and that gate, nobody was manning it. And so they were a bit confused as they were coming through. They thought, well, nobody's here, and they drove through. What happens is you can't do that. 
You can't just drive through. It creates a lot, a lot of problems when you want to go back again. Um, things like court cases, jail or whatever, huge fines and things like that. So warning, please get your uh, little white piece of paper stamped if you are going to go through and come back again. Um, and so anyway, this is what took place. Is that the, the guy at the, um, the checkpoint, he was just ruthless. Um, it was like he must have had the worst day ever. Because when Angela came and said, there is no way, he was horrid. He was, um, you know, so we did bless him afterwards. We just um, pray for him. But he said, there's no way you're going to come through, come back on Monday. Um, and he was just very adamant that Angela was not going to go through. We said, look, we, we're going away. Uh, we're a group of 20 people. And we're all going to stay if she doesn't go. Um, and he says, no, no. So... You know, things are rising up on the inside of us. Um, and so we said, we want to see your supervisor. Um, and so at, at that, we managed to get to see the supervisor. And uh, when we got to the, to the supervisor, the guy was just, the, there was a whole group of them there. They were just so friendly. They were just so nice. Um, and we started praying, and we were praying. But at that point, Georgia was standing next to us. And you remember the Alams when they spoke over, over Georgia and I, they were speaking over us as a house as well. And the Lord says that he's going to come through for our battles. The word of the Lord said that he was going to come through, that people in this house will not have to endure the battles. It's, it's almost like that the time of spiritual warfare is over. It is time to, it's, it's time to enjoy the plunder. Um, that, that, that of the victory. And it's time to start gleaning the plunder of victories um, that have been won on our behalf and that the Lord, the battle belongs to God. So that was the word that was released. And then uh, the word that came was that the, we, all we need to do is say to the Lord, Lord, there is a bully in the camp. There is a bully in the camp. And so there at the checkpoint, we just said to the Lord, Lord, there is a bully in the camp. And things just changed like that. Within seconds, things turned around and Angela was able to just go across. There was no hassle. Do you know, um, the word of the Lord is stronger than anything. The word of the Lord triumphs over any laws. The word of the Lord triumphs over any man's decisions or any government or anything like that. The word of the Lord triumphs. Amen? And so the Lord has prophesied over your life. The Lord has spoken over your life. Therefore, that word triumphs anything that is in your way. Amen. Are we awake here this morning? Hello. Hello. Good morning. Galimera. Um, do you know, the word of the Lord has been spoken and released over your life in order that you, that you when, when, when the circumstance, that you know it trumps. The, the situation that you're in, it trumps the now moment that you're in. You see, we've got to work, walk in God's word now. Is As I'm walking, God, what are you saying now? What do you want to release now? What do you want, want to break through now? Is that the Lord's word trumps. Amen. But the problem, I believe, is that not many of us know the word of God. And so what do we draw from? Okay, what do we draw from if we do not have a firm foundation in God's word? And we've just sensed that the Lord is saying to us, now's the time that I want you as a people to get into my word and to know my word. I feel, you know, there's certain seasons that God comes and he says, my word, my word. And he reminds us about his word. And a few years ago, um, I think, was it two years ago? No, not quite that long ago. The Lord said to us, out of Jeremiah, He says, See today, I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. Okay, that's quite a calling. The Lord says, Today I appoint you in this position. Right. Then he goes on to say, the word of the Lord came to me. Jeremiah says, the word of the Lord came to me. What do you see, Jeremiah? And Jeremiah says, I see the branch of an almond tree. The Lord says, he said to me, you see correctly. 
for I am watching to see that my word is fulfilled. The Lord said to Jeremiah, he said to Jeremiah, Jeremiah, make ready for the word of God. He said to Jeremiah, gird up your loins and make ready for the word of God. Right? And, he, and his intention was that Jeremiah, when, he re, when, when Jeremiah receives the word, that he acts on the word. Right? Because if, if he doesn't act on the word, the circumstance around him will turn on him. Do you understand what I'm saying? The warning to Jeremiah was, Jeremiah, if you don't act on this word, if you do not be obedient to the word that I'm giving you, that word, that situation will turn on you. Do you see how important it is that we have the Word of God? Because if we, if, even if we, if, if we are ignoring the Word of God, we are going to have circumstances turn on us if we don't know the Word of God. And so the Lord is saying, really, you know, I, I, I've, put you, uh, I've called you as sons and daughters. My sheep hear my voice. It's plain. It's simple. My sheep hear my voice. And um, so we don't have an excuse. If you're a sheep, you hear his voice. Okay, just go, meh. Okay. Right, just so that you know. <laughs> um, my sheep hear my voice. And so, you know, the Lord, Lord, is, Lord said to us, make ready, gird up your loins for his word. We're feeling at this time that God is saying, get prepared and get into his word. Make ready, make ready yourselves for his word. Come, come. Yes. Yeah. I had a dream um, two days before the banks um, crashed. crashed and shut their doors. And I think I shared it with you. Did I? I think I did, but I'm sure I did. In my dream, and it relates to what you're saying, which is why I need to share it. In my dream, I saw... Uh, the moon and it was moving very very fast and it was very very close it was big and it and it kind of shocked me because I could see it and it was moving and and I called Angela see I told you I said Angela 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 come here look at this and as I was watching the moon it uh, an, another planet came alongside it I don't know what the relevance of this other planet is but as this other planet came the earth started to move and it was kind of spinning off its place. And as it was doing that, and I was being thrown around, and it was like an earthquake, I said, I shouted out, No, the word of God says the earth is fixed on its axis, on its point, on its axis, and it cannot be moved. And the moment I spoke that, everything came to normal. Everything kind of stopped shaking, and I stood up, and I woke up. And, oh no, and then I heard a voice that said, once more I am going to shake. And I don't remember whether it was shake the earth or shake the all things earth, or yeah. something. Mm. But, but there's a shaking coming. Mm. And two days later, the, the banks kind of mm. um, did their thing. And if I had loads of money, I should have taken it out, but I didn't. <laughs> but the point was that I felt um, from that dream... I need to learn more of the Word of God because it was the Word of God that stopped the mm. shaking, that stopped the planet going. And right. that's it. Exactly. I mean, that, that's a brilliant example is where would Eric have drawn the Word from if it wasn't within him? You see what it says of Jeremiah, it says, Get yourself ready. Stand up and say to them, Whatever I command you, do not be terrified by them or I will terrify you before them. Today I have made you a fortified city, an iron pillar and a bronze wall to stand against the whole land, against the kings of Judah, its officials, its priests and its people of the land. They will fight against you, but you will not, but they, but you will not overcome, sorry, and they will not overcome you, for I am with you and I will rescue you, declares the Lord. You see, when, when you have the word of God on the inside of you, you become a fortified city. You become something that cannot be shaken. You become something that the enemy cannot overcome when you house the Word of God on the inside of you. Amen. Amen. 
And so just as, as Eric could speak to the earth shaking and, and say, the earth will not be shaken off its axis. But you see, I believe what God is speaking out of that situation is we can stand firm on the word of God when everything else may be shaking around us. But it will not shake us. Right? We will be a fortified city as we house the word of God. And the Lord is saying it is so important at this time because um, this is the time of shaking. This is the time that the Lord is shaking everything around us. And we need to be people who are holding out the word of life. Right, Because the time is coming when 10 people will take hold of your, the edge of your garment and say, I'm coming with you because you have the words of life. Right, And it's not just for us, it's so that we can hold out the word of life. Just as, as Chris testified this morning about in his shop there. So the Lord is saying, this is a prophetic moment, this is a prophetic time that he's saying, I want you to get into my word. And so we as a church, we're going to be doing that. We are going to be uh, um, uh, sitting, setting up stations around the city where we fortnightly will be getting together um, to go through the revelations that God has given you in the time that you've been going through the Word. So we are going to be setting up a, an actual, I don't like to use the word program, but a process in which we can go through the Word of God and, and kind of all be hearing what are the revelations that God is giving at us at this time because those revelations, we believe, are going to form the foundation of the word that God wants to release for this region. We also feel that it's going to be the foundation in which God wants to create something. Uh, he's saying, train, equip, get people, get, re get people ready and send out. But what do we train them with? with? What do we equip them with? What do we send them out with? The Lord is, I believe the Lord is saying, the reason I want you to get into my word now is so that you can be relevant with that, which I'm going to release to you, so that you can train and equip people with that to send them out. Uh, hello? You? Yeah. Praise God. You're with me. Um, you see, the thing is, when God brings his word and we hear God's word, we are ruined by it. Because we can't be the same again. We have a responsibility. You see, when he prophesies over you and he releases your word over you, that's it. You're ruined. There is a major responsibility on your life now. It's just to what you know, you've heard the word of God. And if you aren't walking in it, everything around you is going to cave in on top of you. And you don't want to miss the purpose and the plan that God has got for your life. And so it's exciting and also scary all at the same time as God starts to release his word. Amen. Isn't it? It's, it's, it's a really an exciting time. And so, yeah, um, God, I believe, wants to release um, us into um, this time. You know, I, I had a dream last night, just as I was falling asleep. I dreamt um, somebody came up to me, and it was, it was almost like it was the secretary of the church, which we don't have. Um, and the secretary of the church came, with, came to me with a leaflet and said, the leaflet's ready for the vision conference. And there was a picture of a person on the cover with this eye that was all bulging out and it was blind. And that was it. That was the dream. And I, and I woke up, I sort of, because I wasn't sleeping very well, because we had a water tank on top of the roof, and that water tank sounded like a jet was landing um, as it was filling up with water until 3 in the morning. Um, and so I sort of woke up from that sort of like momentary dream, and I was reminded of a dream that the Lord gave me about two years ago, and um, I was flying, and um, I came over this ridge as I was flying, and, um, and then I came to land on the top of this road, the ridge of this road. And um, as I started walking down the road, kind of like floating down the road, there was a, a child that was sitting in the middle of the road with his back to me. And I went past the child, but I knew as I went past the child that he was blind in both eyes. I carried on. There was a big removal truck on the side of the road, some houses. I carried on down the road. As I was coming down the road, a man crossed the road, um, and, and I, I could see he was blind in one eye. And he crossed over the road, and as he was walking across like it, he called to me, and he says, Heal the man who is blind in one eye. 
And I was reminded immediately of that dream uh, this morning, this morning, or well, during the hours of last night when I got that. Is that it is it is so important that if we if we don't if we don't start walking in in what God is releasing and revealing at this time, we are going to leave a generation behind us who is blind, who is aimless, who have got no direction. Right. And so it is so important that where we are missing it at this time, that the, we do not miss it. That, w- that we walk head on into what God has got for us at this time. And it was interesting because I had another dream during the night um, of, of um, two people. And um, it was a really strange dream, this one. But anyway, it was two people. And the one woman's face was covered in ham, layers of ham. Um, and the the um, and 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 I I remember Philip was making a sandwich, <laughs> and on his sandwich he had cheese, right? And um, he said he he said something about he wanted something with his cheese, and I grabbed the ham off her face and I said, "Ham some cheese," and um, and I was flapping the ham. But while I was, it's a strange dream, but while I was taking the um, the the ham off her face, there were layers of healing that were taking place on, the woman, on this woman's face. But she was with somebody who at that very moment was blind in one eye and he was healed. Yes. And he was healed. Um, and so I just felt like the Lord is saying, yeah, there is healing for this generation that's coming. There is, the Lord is leading us into his purposes and his plans at this time. And we can't miss it. We can't miss what God's doing. Because we have a responsibility to the generation that's coming behind us. Amen. That, they, that our ceiling becomes their foundation. Amen. The heights that we are reaching to at the moment in the Lord and the revelations that he's releasing to us needs to be their foundation. Amen. It's too sad that generation after generation after generation after one revival after the next revival after the next great move of God has to start right from the beginning all over again. But things are moving far too quickly now. We are accelerating. Uh, We are in an acceleration. And so um, our young people are going to be overtaking us. At this time, Amen. Um, Gina, can you come and share what you received? Um, you you spoke to us, and then also you had mentioned about Daniel nine and, and ten. Can you just come and tell us? Um, I was just sharing over the weekend about how, for the past couple of months, I felt God um, leading me to pray for myself, but also for us as His people, that we will get the spirit of wisdom and revelation, so that we would know Him better. And that's in Ephesians one, also Colossians one, where it's that we would be filled with the knowledge of His will through all spiritual wisdom and understanding. And um, he had also led me to Isaiah 11, where it says that the spirit of the Lord rested on Jesus. And it was the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and of power, the spirit of knowledge and of the fear of the Lord. And how it's all linked that he is looking for vessels on whom to pour out wisdom and revelation and knowledge and understanding in this season. Mm. And that was for the past couple of months. And then this last week, I was going through First um, Chronicles 12, which is, talks about the children of Issachar who understood the times um, to tell Israel what they ought to do. Mm. And when I was looking at all the different Hebrew words, I just got the understanding that uh, basically God was saying that Issachar means he will bring a reward. Hallelujah. And I felt that God was saying that to those who know, to those who believe that he will bring a reward to them, if they call on his name, if they seek him, he will give them, understood the times, understanding, wisdom, knowledge, discernment, that they might be able to pray his will, but also instruct his people mm. what they need to be doing and accomplishing in the different times and in the different seasons. Mm. And then... Um, So it was just an encouragement. He's saying, cry out, cry out, you know, all of us for wisdom, for discernment, for revelation, for knowledge. I will give it. I will bring that reward. I will give it to you. And you will know so that Mm -hmm. his will is done on earth and in our lives in this season and the nation and nations. And then he showed me two examples that in Daniel 9 and in Daniel 10, these are two different visitations that Daniel had from different angels. Or I don't know if it's the same angel, but anyways, two different visitations. And each time the angel said to Daniel, the, and Daniel and I said to him, 
um, as soon as you began to pray, and it was like from the very beginning that you began to, it was entreaty, supplication, basically intercession, um, an answer was given, a commandment was sent forth, and I have come to explain to you. Hmm. to manifest it, instruct you. In Daniel 10, it was again, from the first day, you set your heart to gain understanding and to humble yourself before the Lord. You were heard, and I have come to explain to you, to manifest, to instruct. And it was that God was showing it in his word. That is it. When we begin to cry out for the wisdom and revelation and knowledge, hmm. that is a, a prayer that delights his heart, and he answers, and he will come and give us understanding and revelation. Hallelujah. Amen. Isn't that exciting? Um, so is your faith built up this morning that, uh, that this is, there is a grace, there is a, an anointing on God's word at this time for us to, uh, to, to, to have revelation, to get instruction. For the Lord wants to build something here on this island. He wants to release something from this island that is relevant to instruct do you understand? It's, it's to instruct. And I was Skyping with, with Matthew Rudolph, those who know Matthew Rudolph from Gateways. I was Skyping with him just before we went away um, uh, this weekend. And he, he writes this to me, which is very interesting what Gina has just said. He writes, he says, The sons of Issachar understood the times and knew what Israel should do. They understood the times, prophetic revelation, and knew what Israel should do, apostolic application. And so he was just confirming um, for us that he was basically praying that that's what would happen as we went away. But I feel that that's what God wants to do for us as a church, is so that we understand the times that we're in, which is the prophetic revelation, understanding what God is doing at this time, and the apostolic application as to what to do about it. Um, and there is an outworking for that. So... Um, we really feel like the Lord wants to lead us into um, like creating uh, a, a school at, at, at some a school of ministry that will equip and train and send um, into this region that is relevant for this region and relevant for the time. So it's an exciting time for us to be in at the moment as a family of God um, and to, to make ready for it. Because you see what's happening at the time is that Cyprus... The word of God that the Lord gave us is that Cyprus is to be a place that multiplies the gifting that is coming in here. And, um, and so the Lord is sending gifting from all around the world into Cyprus. But, it's, but what's going to take place is a multiplication of that to be able to send to the nations around and to be a blessing to the nations around. And it's very interesting that what's happening is a lot of the conferences for the uh, Middle East for the Isaiah 19 highway, it's, it's basically the area where you are making ready for the return of Jesus. Okay, that whole region of making ready for the return of Jesus. And so the Lord is highlighting this whole thing about Isaiah 19, making ready the highway of the Lord for his return. Um, so at this time, a lot of people are coming into Cyprus uh, uh, to have conferences specifically for looking out to the region. What, what's God want to do? What's he want us to pray for? How does he want us to, uh, to prepare the place um, in prayer? And so um, there's two, I know of two different groups at this time that are coming into Cyprus specifically for that. But it's interesting because the word that God gave us from Jeremiah, um, let me just find that. From Jeremiah 2 and verse 10. It says, cross over to the, to the coasts of Kittim and look. See, the Lord is calling the nations. He's calling those that, that he's preparing as intercessors and in that he's saying, cross over to the coasts of Kittim. Cross over to Cyprus. Cross over to Cyprus. I mean, that's, ha, that's exciting, isn't it? God is saying, cross over to Cyprus, and he's calling them to cross over. Cross over to the coast of Kittim and look. See, um, and then he says, send to Kedar, which are the sons of Ishmael. Send to Kedar, which are all the other nations that are surrounding Israel, that God is calling at this time to make ready the highway. Right? And it's these nations that surround Israel that are actually to be the blessing of Israel that the Lord is calling also. And they also 
all gathering in Cyprus. A lot of these nations are all gathering in Cyprus to pray for Israel. And it says, see if there has ever been anything like this. Has a nation ever changed its gods? Um, and it's, 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 it's like a rebuke of Israel, the way Israel has forsaken its first love. But it's calling the nations to cross over and look and to intercede that Israel is restored to the Lord. That is exciting, isn't it? And Cyprus is in a very significant place and a very significant time for those things to be taking place now. Hallelujah. Do you feel part of destiny? Do you feel part of a purpose? That was the point of this morning, is that you feel part of a purpose, a much, much bigger purpose. Let's pray. Let's stand and pray. Father, I want to thank you that, Lord, you are setting the stage. You are preparing it all. Lord, you, you have gone ahead and you've prepared everything for us. You've prepared the table. You've prepared the banquet. Lord, you've done it all. And, Father, all you're asking for us, Lord, in, at this time, Lord, this hour, is, is there anybody who is saying, use me, Lord. Because, Father, you have, you have prepared everything that is needed. This morning, Father, we ask that you, uh, Lord, will, will grab us in our spirit and you will stir up the kingdom within us. Stir up our passion for the kingdom. Lord, stir up our desire for your kingdom. Holy Spirit, that you would come, Lord, and take our focus off our own lives, take our focus off our own homes, Lord, and turn our focus to the kingdom of God. Turn our focus to building your house. Turn our focus at this hour, Lord, to the greater things. Turn our focus, Lord, to, to, the, to, uh, to the coming of the King of Kings, Lord. Turn our focus to be, to be making ready the, 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 the territory, the environment, Lord, for your return, for the great outpouring of your spirit, Lord. Father, we are living in such a, an, an, an awesome place. Cyprus is wonderful. Thank you that we are here in this nation at this time, making us ready. We praise you for this nation. We thank you for this nation's destiny. We thank you for the privilege of being here. At this time. And Father, I pray that you would stir us up on the inside. You said to us, Lord, not to worry about anything. Lord, when you spoke about how the uh, sparrows of the air do not sow or reap, but Lord, or, or store up in bonds, bonds, but you provide for them. You're saying, do not worry about today. Do not worry about tomorrow or what tomorrow might bring. Lord, you're saying to us, seek first the kingdom of God. Lord, you're wanting to put that in focus in our lives at this time. Your kingdom, the kingdom of God, because that's what it's all about. Because everything else will just fall into place. And so, Father, I pray, stir us by your spirit at this time for the greater things. In Jesus' name, amen.